Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to discuss the tools and the materials that I use to create watercolor paintings. What you see behind me is a piece that I'm currently working on. It's on Archer's watercolor paper, cold pressed, 22 inch by 30 inch. It's a full sheet. I have it mounted on Homo soap board. Since the paper is 300 pound cold pressed paper, there was no need to stretch it. It remains relatively flat. All I did is staple it to the um, mounting board. And over here on the side, you see my subject matter. It's from one of my photographs, and I view my subject on my tablet. This is absolutely a wonderful way to work. You should consider this video as supplementary to any of my watercolor painting demonstration videos. Now let's take a closer look at my painting table. What you see is my basic setup. My painting is in front of me on an easel that allows me to either paint vertically or horizontally in any angle in between. My palettes, my paints, my brushes, my water, all are placed on my painting table. And my painting table is on wheels so it can be moved. That makes it easy for me to position it exactly where I need it in order to facilitate the process of painting. For colors, we'll start with the colors. I use only the primaries, but within each primary, you see a range of colors here. For example, the blues. For blues, I use Antwerp blue, cobalt blue, French ultramarine blue, Windsor blue, and cerulean blue. For red, I use Windsor red, sometimes alizarin crimson, quinacridone magenta, or permanent magenta, Quinacridone red, and cadmium scarlet. For my yellows, I have Windsor yellow, Oriolan yellow, and I include cadmium yellow in my palette of colors. Some additional browns that I do use are brown matter and burnt sienna. Both I find invaluable and important colors to have in your palette of colors. My secondary colors and tertiary colors are always mixed using the primaries. Here we have a mixed green. That's Windsor yellow. And what's buried under the green coating, see if we could get back to the primary color. You see the blue there? That's ultramarine blue, French ultramarine blue. Makes a beautiful, beautiful, natural green. And of course, since we're talking about mixing a color, you need a bunch of containers to be able to clean your brushes in. I do like to mix my colors in containers like this, Rubbermaid containers, and I also use them as my palette for holding color. In each one that we see here, I've squeezed out pure color from a tube of paint. This is Cerulean, Cobalt, Antwerp, Windsor Red, Permanent Magenta, and I could go on and on and on. Because I'll often need to mix a large quantity of color and pour it onto my painting, these containers are perfect for doing that type of job. I use two different types of palettes. I like the butcher tray palette because it facilitates free intermixing of color. And I like this, the John Pike type palette. It's a nice flat, large mixing area, and you can also isolate your colors within the little bin containers along the perimeter of the palette. I have a large assortment of brushes of all different sizes, but the ones I use most often are three quarter inch, flat angle brush, a number six round, a number zero round. Occasionally I'll use for a fan brush, especially when it comes to splattering water onto the surface to create different types of effects. Aside from these brushes, I have an assortment of other brushes that I rely on. A three quarter inch flat, A number 12 round Utrecht. 
I have a few different size rigger brushes or line brushes, the long, long, long bristles for making lines that are great for grass and things like that. A one inch flat and a Utrecht one inch angle brush. Although I use flat brushes, I prefer the angle brush because the angle allows you to get into corners, tight areas, something that you can't do with the flat. Flat is good for washes. This is good for washes and getting into tight spaces. Excellent brush. Happen to have a palette knife in my hand. I actually do use a palette knife in watercolor. It creates an interesting texture. I also will use bristle brushes that are designed for oil paint. They're excellent for lifting out color and scrubbing into a surface. For wetting my paint, I'm a big fan of using plastic squeeze bottles like this. This is one of my favorite. It has many uses, as you'll see in my watercolor videos. And it's a very convenient way to dispense clean water into your paint. And I'll also use a squeeze bottle like this. For wet in my colors. Some additional tools will see me develop highlights in watercolor paintings using a tool called the Incredible Nib. I also establish highlights with an X-Acto knife by scratching into the paper. I use tissues or paper towels to blot up paint. And often for scrubbing into the surface, removing colors, splattering. A clean toothbrush is good. This container is filled with masking material. I use Pabio drawing gum as my masking material. And what I use it for is masking out sections that I want to protect from washes of color. For removing the masking material, I use a kneaded eraser. For tube grays, I like neutral tint or Payne's gray. And that's what I use most often for tube grays. And I usually have an assortment of natural and synthetic sponges on hand. For watercolor paper, I work with Archer's cold pressed 140 pound paper most of the time. And I usually purchase my paper in full sheets. The Archer's cold press is an absolutely beautiful paper to work on and paint responds very nicely to its dampened surface. Another paper that I use quite often is 300 pound full sheet cold pressed arches watercolor paper. If I'm not painted on the entire full sheet, I cut down my paper to the size that I need and I stretch it on a piece of homosote board. The small paintings like this, I use unmounted homosote board, but the board has been painted with polycrylic varnish to seal it. Why do I paint it to seal it? Two reasons. I don't want it soaking up moisture and warping. It'll do that. Two, any impurities that are in the board will leach into the wet paper when I place my paper on the board to stretch it. When working on full sheet watercolor paper, it's necessary to have a supporting frame attached to the back of the home soap board. This painting is 22 inches by 30. It's full sheet watercolor paper on 300 pound Archer's cold press watercolor paper. And because it's heavy weight paper, there was no need to stretch it. The paper lies relatively flat even when wet. Although I did staple it in a few places just to make sure it would remain flat. The mounting board that I have this 300 pound paper stapled to is the same homosote that I use for my smaller painting. But where I didn't need to reinforce the board for the smaller, I do need to have it reinforced when I stretch a full sheet. Because if I didn't, the board would warp, it would bend. So what I do 
for anything that measures 22 by 30 and larger, I build a supporting frame that the home soda is glued and stapled to. This prevents the board from warping. And the result is an absolutely beautiful surface to paint on. My method for stretching watercolor paper is slightly different than what most people do. If you'd like to see what I do, please watch my video on how to stretch watercolor paper. That's about it. I hope seeing my studio setup helps you with yours. Thanks for watching the video.